Welcome! Today um, I'm going to do something a little bit different. Um, I'm going to change uh, some speakers in a guitar speaker cabinet. As you can see behind me, I have here a high watt 2x12 speaker cabinet. Very, very nice speaker cabinet. Very, very nice sounding cabinet. Um, unfortunately uh, for this cabinet, it has two Celestian 7080 speakers in, which I don't like the sound of that much. The bottom end just goes all bleh, uh, blubby, you know, when you push it really hard. Ah, that's what I feel anyway. So um, I went on eBay to have a look around to see what I could find. Uh, and I was going to get a couple of vintage 30s. I like second hand speakers because they're already played in. Um, but anyway, that's my preference. But um, I come across a couple of uh, Celestian 75s and I thought to myself, actually, that might be quite a good idea because I've already got a 4x12 with some vintage 30s in. It'd be nice to have a cabinet which sounds a little bit different. You know, it has a different kind of speaker in, give me a different sort of sound. Um, so I thought, okay, fair enough, I'll do that. And they were really, really cheap too. And, um, but the only downside is that this cabinet is 16 ohms. Um, so, um, so this cabinet, I think it's got two, uh, two eight home, eight home speakers in. And they're wired, so the, ca the, the cab runs at 16 ohms. These speakers, which I haven't unwrapped yet, as you can see, they're still wrapped up. Uh, so hopefully they work. Uh, these are our 16 ohm speakers, so I'll be able to run. So I'll be able to run uh, this cab at 8 ohms using these two speakers here. So uh, with all that complicated stuff going on, uh, I'm going to have to kind of do some rewiring and some soldering because I don't use like uh, uh, spade end uh, connectors. Uh, I'm going to solder everything in, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to do the whole thing from start to finish. So um, it might be a bit long-winded, so grab a coffee, a cup of tea or a beer, whatever you prefer. Uh, sit back, relax and uh, watch me transform this uh, 2x12 OK sounding, sounding cab into a 2x12 high watt amazing sounding cab. Here we go! I forgot! Um, we're going to take a, a, a sound bite as well. So. Uh, it's kind of all mic'd up, so we'll, 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 we'll do a sound bite of it before, so with the 78 speakers in, and then we'll do a sound bite uh, with the, uh, with the uh, G75, so the Celestian 75 watt speakers in, uh, so you can hear the difference, uh, hopefully. Okay, first we need to unbox these. I don't do unboxing videos, but I'll make as quick as I possibly can. These aren't the original. Um, containers. Obviously, this is what the guy bought to replace the speakers that I've just purchased off him. It's a common thing to do. Um, looks like he's mixed his speakers up, which is a common thing to do. We're not doing that today. Let's get these out. So, okay, here's the first one. Okay, I'm just going to inspect these. Um, they look brand new. It's like no dust on them or anything, which is um, unusual. Um, yeah, they look good. I'm just going to test them. Just going to give them a quick test to make sure they work while they're on the bench. Yeah, so I'm just going to test them um, using a battery. Uh, just a battery. I'm gonna put a couple of a couple of paper clips on here. Easier said than done. But it's just to make sure I get a crackle out of them so I know they work, so I don't spend all my time putting them in the cabinet and soldering up and everything and then find out they don't work. But anyway, we stick them on terminals. Yeah, that one works. And that one works too, I can hear it crackling. So there, that's fine. You can see the cones, obviously the cones move as well when you do it. It's hard to see in this video. Um, there's plenty of videos on, on how to check uh, um, check speakers, so I don't want to go through the ins and outs of it, but I've just done a quick check. You can pretty much see they're working and hear they're working, so we'll move on. We'll take the uh, the old speakers out of the cabinet, uh, and we'll take all the wire off, and uh, we'll put the new ones in and go from there.
There we go, a couple of uh, 78 East speakers in there, as you can see. Wide, uh, let's have a look. Yep, a couple of 8 ohm speakers wide for um, a 16 ohm cab. Okay, so we're we'll, uh, just going to whip these out, desolder them. Uh, well, desolder them, whip these out, and uh, put the new ones in. I carefully lined up the uh, the replacement speakers uh, with the holes, and and lightly turning each screw to, to to you know tighten the speaker down. There's a couple of things you need to check. You need to, to make sure about this. All right, is that don't tighten the speaker down too much. And the reason why. So if you tighten the speaker down too much, okay, if you look here, around here, this is this part of the speaker is, is fairly kind of thin. And if you push it down too hard, you kind of warp the speaker. We don't want to warp the speaker, we want to keep it uniform all the way around. Also, um, it stops any kind of rubbing here. So you've got to make sure that you line up the holes really, really carefully. And when you put the screws in, you do so really, really carefully. You just have to just, and I'm probably overemphasizing this a little bit, but you can, you can like, you can make a speaker sound really rubbish, you know, if it starts rubbing because you've over tightened the speaker in the cabinet. So, so all I do is I start one screw, just, just lightly, very lightly, then across over to the next screw over that way like in a diagonal like diagonally like this way this way and this way and that way you kind of you kind of get everything the same in terms of you know how tight it needs to go I mean I don't know how I can tell you that but I'm not I'm not doing this with a with an electric screwdriver I'm doing it by hand and I'm just doing it so I know that it's tight enough so the screws won't come undone So that's kind of important uh, when you put the speakers back in. I don't know if you've ever heard of this before, but my, it, it is really important. I can't overemphasize how important it is. And you just keep going diagonal like this, da -da, da -da, da -da, like this. So, so um, there, 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 there. So not not around clockwise. Don't tighten it clockwise. Tighten it opposite each other. So you tighten one screw. Then tighten the opposite screw. Then you move to the next screw. Tighten that, and you tighten the opposite screw. That way, you can get them. You can get them uniform. Nice and solid. Now we're going to wire them up uh, because they're two 16 ohm speakers, and uh, we're going to wire this cab. That means we have to wire this cab for eight ohms, um, and so we'll wire them in parallel. So from the input jack socket. A the plus and minus to there and then plus and minus to there. I'll show you as I go along. Um, that will give us an uh, 8 ohm cabinet, uh, which is all we can do with two, uh, well, well, which is the best way to wire it up for two 16 ohm speakers. So we're going to do it that way. Um, got me wire, uh, I'm going to sort all that out. Uh, got me soldering iron, it's hot, ready to go. And uh, I'm, going to I'm going to clean up these joints here. Uh, a bit messy. I'm going to clean them up. I'm going to do that and then uh, I'll switch the camera back on and um, and uh, we'll just go through the um, wiring up. A little trick here, right? Just give me a little bit of cardboard. You already know that trick. Oh, this speaker. You probably can't see this very well, but um, if I zoom in and see what happens, I don't think it's going to help. Maybe you can see it, maybe you can't. But there's loads of uh, solder on here. And to get it off, to get the stuff off, um, I'm going to use this this thing. It's kind of a suckery thing. Let's bring the camera back. Basically, I heat the solder up, and then when I press this button, it sucks the solder off. Um, I'm really not in a position to show you the detail of it, but um, believe me, it works, especially when you've got like um, 
uh, especially if you, you know, if you're wiring up guitars and stuff like that, and uh, somebody before you's already put a lot of solder on there, uh, you just can't work with it because there's so much solder on it. Um, you heat the solder up and you point this at it, at the joint and click the button and it sucks the solder off basically that's what it is it's a great bit of kit um, if you do a lot of soldering and you haven't got one of these go go buy one I think they're just a few uh, a few quid or a few dollars or whatever and uh, it's a lifesaver I soldered them cut the wire to length check the length, make sure that um, when it shuts down it's not, the wire's not all flapping around in there so when that shuts down that'll be okay like that uh, still enough wire so I can actually solder solder this um, I'll crack on and do that now, get that done um, we'll put it all back together again and uh, we'll see what it sounds like Okay, so we've put uh, the uh, Celestian G1275s uh, in the high watt tuba 12 cab in place of the 7080s, which I thought sounded a bit crap. Uh, um, what do you think? Do you think it sounds better? Um, I want to know. Put your comments in the bottom. I think it sounds better, uh, but it's what do you think? Uh, do you think it was worth the hassle or the trouble of the wiring, the fiddling around? Let me know. Put the comments in the bottom. Also, um, just as a side note here, you know, if you're going to do this kind of stuff, you know, be very careful, check your work, uh, don't want you blowing your kit up or blowing yourself up. Uh, we can't have any of that, uh, so don't do it. But otherwise, I'll catch you later.